Hey, what's up, guys? I, um, I wanted to start the day by giving you a little insight on who I am, and hopefully, uh, or maybe I'll tell you something you don't know about me. Um, I'm going to start my story off by telling you about uh, Von Willebrand's disease. Um, Von Willebrand's disease is a bleeding disorder that's not quite as severe as a hemophiliac, but it is a um, bleeding disorder that my blood does not have the clotting factor that most people's blood has. Um, I was born with it. I uh, got it from my mom. My mom uh, kind of ended up with it. Nobody in her family history had it uh, that, that she was able to trace back. Um, my mom was actually uh, a big part of the development of the medicine and uh, the, uh, the knowledge and the research on Von Willebrand's uh, back in the 70s. Um, my mom missed an entire year of school uh, because of, if I'm not mistaken, it was during the time of her menstrual cycle starting. Um, and uh, so then that rolled over to me. Uh, I have actually given it to Emma. Um, Kaylin, my oldest daughter, doesn't have it. Um, Emma, my youngest daughter, does. And, uh, and what the hematologist tells us is that if you have Von Willebrand's disease, your personality is absolutely the personality that will jump off the rooftop. That's just how it works. So that is who I was as a kid and that is who I still continue to be. Um, as you could tell, I, tattoos and um, the, the way I got my tattoos is by going in the tattoo shop and not telling them that I have Von Willebrand's. I told them I wanted a tattoo. And uh, the guy, after, um, after I've gotten multiple tattoos, I, I let uh, the guy that tattoos me know that I have Von Willebrand's and he said, you actually bleed a little less than most people when you're, when you're getting tattooed. So it's kind of an odd revelation, but it was a kind of a, kind of a crazy deal. So, um, at six years old, I had this big deal where I was bleeding, uh, and I was throwing up blood and I, you know, it just, it was a big deal. It was my first big deal, um, of my life with Von Willebrand's. Um, they had to take me to the hospital, uh, I got a blood transfusion at the time, um, and for the most part through my childhood, the things that, that affected me was, um, you know, at nine or ten years old, I remember uh, very vividly sitting and, um, and taking a test in school, and, you know, I'm sitting there at my desk, my desk is in front of me, and all of a sudden, my nose just, poof, it's like a, a gush of blood. Um, that happened numerous times. I went to school, I went home from school uh, numerous times in middle school. Um, it was mainly through my middle school years, which back then I went to A.G. Cox and A.G. Cox was fourth grade up. Um, so I remember a lot of the A.G. Cox years being where I went home a lot. Um, if it wasn't bleeding, it was a migraine headache. And I kind of think that that came with the bleeding disorder, but nobody ever told me that. So, um, so anyway, through the years, uh, Von Willebrand's the, the, the hindrance that it gave me was that I couldn't play football and I couldn't wrestle. I was the, uh, I was one of three boys. Um, I was, I'm a middle child and neither one of my brothers enjoyed sports. I did. I was a sports guy. I love sports. Um, and of course football was something that I, you know, thought that I would have loved to play. Um, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, the thing that, uh, don't touch the stove because it's hot. And as a kid, you want to touch the stove. So tell me that I can't play football. And that's the one thing I wanted to do. Um, I think that's just a kid thing. So, um, but as the years progress, everything, everything is Von Willebrand's kind of levels out in your adult age or in your adult years. Um, you could see like, uh, just stuff like, uh, can you see, yeah, that bruise there. Like, I can't tell you where that came from. I'm a physical dude. I have never lived my life like I have a disease or like a, uh, I have a bleeding disorder. I do have medicine that I take. When I got nosebleeds as a kid, I would have to use this stuff called gel foam and Amicar. Amicar is still one of the main drugs of Von Willebrand's, but when I took Amicar, I had to take 12 pills initially. Um, and then I think it was three pills every hour as long as the bleeding continued. Um, I remember crazy times of <clears throat> my dad taking uh my dad taking and holding my nose up here to to get it to stop and uh and you know he'd hold it for like five minutes at a time my face was literally numb by the time he was finished um uh 
making sure that my nose wouldn't bleed anymore. But, uh, but several times through my childhood, the bleeding disorder, you know, left me in a situation where you're not like the other kids. I mean, you're, you're, you're definitely, uh, you know, my friends knew and my friends still know. I still have friends that I went to school with that, that talked to me about those instances in school where, um, where my nose would just start bleeding and they were in the classroom or they just knew about it. So, um, as an adult, of course, I go into an auto mechanic. Or I'm not a mechanic, but an auto um, field, period. I work on cars. I love working on cars. And working on cars, I'm always getting beat up. Uh, at our first shop we opened in 95, I remember my brother telling me and the guy that was working with us at the time, uh, don't let Michael get a hold of a razor blade because every time he gets a razor blade in his hand, he cuts himself. So something you learn to deal with, something you learn to... Um, to to get through and and it's another sign of uh perseverance and it's another um it's another thing that my faith has to bring me through those things um i have faith that there was a reason that i ended up with that um it, it, recently a uh, quick story about emma um she lost her first tooth she literally bled for a day and a half she went to school her teacher was kind of tripping over the fact that she went to school bleeding and we went back and picked her up and um, we're sitting in the kitchen, and she's on the kitchen counter, and she says, uh, she said, Daddy, I wish I didn't have this stupid bleeding disorder. And I said, well, God gave us the bleeding disorder because he knew we were strong enough to get through it. And that's truly how I have to feel about it. And um, I don't have, uh, you know, I, I don't feel like that anything in my life is a mistake. Uh, I got a bleeding disorder on for a reason. Um and, and it did make me stronger throughout my childhood years. It did, uh, it, it did teach me a lot um, about how being different is okay. I mean, you sometimes being different is all right. And, um, and the bleeding disorder does that. So uh, as a positive message, I'll give you, uh, you know, no matter what you're faced with every day, um, nobody knows what you're waking up with. And, and nobody in this world should matter. It shouldn't matter to you what what people think of you. Um, what should matter is that you're you're secure in yourself and that you're comfortable with who you are. Because um, we're all unique individuals. Uh, God tells us several times in the Bible that there is no no person alike. Everybody is individual. Everybody's DNA is different. How crazy is that? Out of the billions of people across the the world in the history of time, nobody has been made the same as that way. And, uh, and so we separate ourselves by our differences. Our differences actually is what does separate us. Um, and, uh, if everybody was alike and everybody went down the same path, then, uh, then, you know, the world would kind of be bland. I think it would be a very boring world to live in. So, um, anyway, I wanted to start out by something from my childhood, uh, something that I've lived with my entire life. Um, uh, one added note is last year, uh, after a hospital stay that I'll talk about later in one of my stories, but um, after a hospital stay, I go home and I, um, I realize that uh, I'm looking through my hospital charts and I realize that there's a test in there that says hep C and it says positive. Well, nobody at the hospital told me I had a positive hep C test and I didn't know maybe if it was just a positive antibody and they didn't really, you know, know that I had hep C. Well, I, um, I, I go back to my to my doctor and get tested, and sure enough, I have Hep C. Um, the doctor says that uh, that from what he can tell, um, I've probably had it since that six-year-old blood transfusion that I told you about, and uh, and so that left me with uh, with Hep C for about 35 years. Um, through those 35 years, and I, I'm sure I'll talk plenty about this more than I'd like to, but um, I had a lot of years of drinking. I, I partied every weekend. So as, as you already know, my liver is beat. My liver's beat, I'm cirrhotic. Um, and, uh, and I work every day trying to make sure that I do the, the, the healthiest thing I can to make sure my liver's gonna be good. But um, anyway, I'm nearing up on the 10 minute, sec 10 minute uh, section of the video and I don't want my videos to last more than 10 minutes because I won't ever watch a video that's more than 10 minutes. Uh, most of the time I don't watch them more than five minutes, but hopefully my story is compelling enough to keep you around. Real life testimony. Check us out. Like us on Facebook because everybody has a story. Peace.